and welcome to another Coffee with Kilroy, or what I sometimes call beverage in a book. My beverage, well, you know, you know what that is. I'm having coffee, and I hope you are enjoying whatever you're having whenever you are watching this. My book today is uh, Philip uh, Sabin's Simulating War, Studying Conflict Through Simulation Games. Now, I kind of, I touched upon this and, and when I did a kind of just a, a brief overview of, of war game books in general, and uh, but now I'm kind of coming back to these uh, with a little bit more reflection or a little bit a little bit more of a deeper dive, and not really a deep dive into this. I just kind of want to cover this book uh, so that uh, you know it's out there, and that uh, if you want to use this as a resource or look into this, then um, you know you know what you're getting into. So with that, let me move the coffee out of the way and give the book some more attention here. So uh, Philip Sabin is a professor, I think, at King's College, and he has a whole course on war game and, and developing war games and studying war games. And uh, this, uh, he's got uh, several books. Uh, I've got at least two of them. Uh, spoiler alert, I'll do the other one at some other point. Um, but... Um, you know, he, he lectures and he, uh, there's also, I think the, uh, there's a Wargaming Network on YouTube that I think has covered some of the, some of those lectures or what as well, but uh, he has courses and lectures and books on, on this topic. And so look at the back here, we've got some of the, you know, the, the quotes, but the thing I want to point out here is over the past 50 years, many thousands of conflict simulations have been published that bring the dynamics of past and possible future wars to life. In this book, Philip Sabin explores the theory and practice of conflict simulation based on his 30 years of experience in designing war games and using them with military and civilian students. Simulating war sets conflict simulation in its proper context alongside techniques such as game theory, in operational analysis. It explains in detail the analytical and modeling techniques involved and teaches you how to design simulations of conflict for, of your choice. The book provides eight simple uh, illus illustrative simulations of specific historical conflicts, complete with rules, maps, and counters. Uh, simulating war is essential reading for all recreational and professional simulation gamers and for anyone who is interested in modeling war from teachers and students to military officers. The book is uh, supplemented by free downloads available at this site here. And that's one of the reasons I picked this up was um, I was on a uh, do-it-yourself or uh, print-and-play binge uh, uh, for a while. <laughs> I've got way too many print-and-play games uh, stored away in a whole filing system. But um, the... Uh, and so I picked this up because it, it had some games in here. There, there's some full games in here, you know, the maps, the counters, the rules, all that stuff uh, is in here. So I wanted to pick that up. But but I also want to pick this up because this is, you know, if uh, I've done some game design, not a lot. Uh, I haven't done really any in, in um, several years now because, you know, life happens, right? Uh, work, kids, family. Um, and you know, this channel takes up more time, uh, and I like playing games. So I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I tend to like playing more than I like designing. So that's probably why I'm not a designer, but, uh, but I did, uh, like, I did, uh, fashion myself a little bit of a designer, design some games. And so this is kind of essential to that. If you want to be uh, a game designer, or especially a war game designer, this to me is a very good book to look at and try to figure out some theories and some approaches, um, you know, by, by playing a lot of games, I, I get some really good ideas or really, uh, have some, um, important influences. However, you know, this is a kind of a how-to book. This talks, goes into a lot more in-depth theory on, on game design, and then actually has some sample games in here to display those points. So, uh, contents, you have theory, uh, modeling war, accuracy versus simplicity, that's something that is, um, I'm uh, really interested in. Education utility and uh, simulation research. You know, I also look at accuracy versus simplicity um, in another context uh, of, of um, realism versus uh, game or, or playability. So realism versus playability. 
Are you trying to simulate? I mean, it, it, a lot of games tend to really focus more on the simulation, especially war games uh, are focusing on a simulation. You're trying to recreate a battle or a war or a conflict and trying to get all the, the details to it, right? The, the supply, the, the terrain, the uh, weapons, the capability of the different units, uh, the uh, interaction between the units, you know, whether you're dealing with mechanized or artillery or mobile or what have you, or, or, or just foot. Um, all that goes into a simulation uh, in trying to recreate, uh, you know, a battle. But, uh, you know, there, there, there can be really interesting simulations, but there's really not much of a game there. It's more of an exercise. It's more of a, um, it's more of a course. <laughs> it's more of a, you know, uh, a lab that you might have for for a course. Uh, you're not really playing a game there, and so uh, we call these war games, and we call them board games. And so that you know, there needs to be some of a game there. And I always harken back to the old SPI Avalon Hill. I thought Avalon Hill focused a little bit more on playability. Not saying that all the, that they didn't focus on simulation. I'm just saying that they're t t to me their games tended to focus a little bit more on playability for the most part, and SPI. On the other hand, tended to focus a little bit more on simulation, you know, trying to get all the details and trying to get the exactness or realism uh, down. Um, both both had both had games, both were playable, both were simulations. But I I just felt like that's kind of that to me that was my opinion. That's how they bared out. And in in this section, he kind of versus accuracy versus simplicity, uh, which kind of gets into some of the playability, but. It, it's more of, you know, how much realism or accuracy can you really have in your simulation uh, to where you can just, it, it just becomes too complex. It's, it's not a reduction of the conflict. You're, you're just recreating the entire conflict and, and without, without the bloodshed, right? Um, so, uh, but I look at it from playability as well as opposed to, as opposed to just pure simplicity. Uh, you have the mechanics, so designing the components, modeling conflict dynamics, modeling and command dynamics, integration and testing. Then we get to examples, ancient warfare, World War II, and tactical combat. So some examples he has there. Then he has some conclusions with, uh, he has a conclusion, then he has some appendix here. You know, talking about the components and all the other stuff you have here. So there's some plates in here, some figures, because some of these are just the, the, the war game components themselves. So introduction, and I'm not gonna read this whole thing. I, I kind of gave, kind of gave you my, my outline here. But he goes into the theory, uh, and this is a, uh, an interesting um, take on uh, modeling war. You know, you've got the, mili you know, the, the kind of the intersection between military affairs, gaming, and simulation, right? And so gaming, you have board games, card games, video games, sport, okay? And then uh, on simulation, you have uh, painting and scale modeling. So he's mainly talking about miniatures here, historical and science fiction, amateur dramatics. Um, and then over here on military affairs, military reading, battlefield tours, all right? And then you have the intersection of those. And so the intersection of those three is what he is kind of defining as, as war gaming. Um, it's interesting here is that between gaming and simulation, he's doing fantasy and simulation games. I found that interesting. Anyway, so um, so he talks about the theory and gives you some basis of that. Uh, and then also gets into the next section. Let's see what the next section is. Is accuracy versus simplicity. That was that part I was talking about where I kind of go into playability. As, as a component of games, because, you know, it, it is a game, by the way, right? It's supposed to be a game. Um, and I think that's some of the differences between, you know, professional wargaming and hobby wargaming. Hobby wargaming, you know, we definitely uh, want a game, and we focus more on the game aspect, and, and there's a certain element of our hobby that focuses on the competition, right? You know, they, they want to win, Uh uh, there has to be a winner in the game, uh, and um, and of course you know there's a whole even further subsec sec segment of our hobby that you know goes to um, conventions and 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 tournaments and competes in you know the WBC and, and tournaments in some of these games, and so that that's really more focused on the winning a game aspect, whereas I think professional. Um, Wargaming is, you know, you're trying to, it's a game, but it's it's trying to learn something from it. You're trying to game the situation 
and do an exercise to learn something from it. You know, what are, what are the capabilities of each side? What are some of our options? What are some of the, what are some of the weaknesses or strengths that we can uh, accentuate and stuff like that? So, I mean, it, it's, it's a different type of, of gaming uh, the, the situation. And game, I think, means a little bit something different than just a winner or a loser in a competitive aspect. There's, 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 a, there's a, a learning aspect. I focus more on the learning aspect. Now, there's a there's a lot of our hobby focuses on the learning aspect uh, in board gaming, and especially war games or, or historical games have that aspect. But uh, but there's still a game there. You're playing a game. I tend to focus on the learning aspect of the gaming. I don't. Uh, it's not that I don't want to win, but I I tend to play a lot of you know two handed games or solitaire games, and so I'm trying to understand the conflict uh by by moving the the cardboard pushing cardboard across <laughs> across a hex map uh here's the educational utility what what i was just talking about there you know learning from these exercises learning from uh the the, the games uh and what 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 um what's going on there so anyway so uh again if you're into if you want to design a war game uh, or want to you know understand a little bit more about war game design? I I, I would recommend this book uh, uh, and, and going through it. You might not agree with all the aspects of it, but I think there's there's a lot to be uh, learned here. Simulation research. I mean, um, what makes both professional and recreational war games serious and not mere abstract diversions is that they attempt to simulate certain key aspects of real armed conflict. So research is thus an integral and indispensable element of war game design. And so that, and, and, you know, that also is going to factor into your accuracy or realism or simulation value, whatever you want to call that. Uh, the, the, the tighter your research, the better your research, the, 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 the more, uh, and I am always using realism as in quotes because I really don't know what that means, <laughs> what realism in a board game means, but anyway, um, but um, uh, the, your, your, your research is going to uh, greatly affect your design in that regard. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it's interesting to see some designs that, you know, that came out. Like there were some, there were some Vietnam games that came out during Vietnam. There were some uh, Gulf War games that came out, you know, before, right before the Gulf War. And then, then you have the conflict. Uh, or the conflict goes on for a little bit of time, and then you can reevaluate that and figure out, well, my, my information's better now. You know, there have been some uh, Eastern Front games that have kind of redesigned or relooked at some of their um, some of their assumptions based on new information. You know, new information that comes out you know years later, and so your research really may may never may never stop. You know, when you're when you're designing a war game. Um, and that's, that's it's also interesting that you know you, it, it, to me I think this plays out a lot in our current uh, environment in the hypothetical games because uh, you you know World War uh, Three or the Third World War from you know the signature game from Compass signature design series game from Compass Games which was a Frank Chadwick design that came out in the eighties. Um, you know, they, they re-released that and of course it was revamped or, or at least, you know, had a little bit of a facelift on it. I don't think they changed it dramatically, but they did update it a little bit, but it's based on an eighties conflict. Well, an eighties conflict that never happened. And so when Frank Chadwick designed it, it was all based on his research and understanding of the capabilities of those forces at that time. And then you're going to be playing out what, what if they were, if a cold war went hot. And now, uh, now we're playing it in 2023. Uh, some of the information might be updated because some of those capabilities of those units are better understood now looking back as opposed to trying to look forward. However, you know, we still game those situations. We still play uh, those 80 based, those 1980s based conflicts uh, based on what we know today. And so that's always, and, and so now you have, uh, so those are looking back, but now you have the next war series, um, from, uh, from GMT games, which is doing what the third world war and a lot of those games of that era were, were doing in the eighties. You know, they were looking at what, what if war were to break out, what would happen? 
now next war series is like what if war would break out what would happen but they're but they're they're doing the look forward now so it, it's and, and and there's some revision of some of those i think that especially what's happened with ukraine i think um you know the designers probably looking at some of their uh, assumptions of the soviet uh, or sorry <laughs> the russian capability golly i'm i'm, I'm mixing my errors here the, the, i think they're looking at some of the capabilities of the um the Russian capabilities based on what's happening in Ukraine and maybe revising some of their assumptions in like their next war, Poland, uh, and, and stuff like that, because, um, it might not play out that way. And there's a lot, and, and, you know, uh, uh, lock and load, you know, has their, uh, world at war series, world at war 85 series, which, you know, has 85 in the title. So it's all based on assumptions in 85. And they're all looking at the capabilities of those units at that time. And they're also trying to apply, Russian uh, doctrine uh, and, and NATO doctrine at that time and how that might play out. But, uh, you know, it's interesting that your research really never stops. You might learn more information. You might look back at something that you had assumptions earlier and say, well, no, it didn't really play out that way. So this is some of the maps that are in here. So again, this is the main reason why I picked this up was to get access to some of these games here. But, you know, and there's downloadable content that you can get uh, as well. So if you want to make all these different games. But uh, I like that, you know, he gives some examples in here. Uh, and, and his course uh, teaches students uh, all these concepts, right? I mean, more than just what's in this book. But they go over these concepts and they design war games. They design simulations as part of that course. I, I <laughs> wish I had that when I was in college. I had some, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, here's mechanics. He's talking about designing the components. And so was, there's some there's some real good basic, you know, uh, Wargaming 101 type issues and, 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 and discussions in here. Modeling conflict dynamics. And, you know, not everything is, is done on, you know, is done with just combat factors and dice and talks about that. Um... Modeling command dynamics. You know, this is something that I didn't really get into when I first started getting into war games. I, I just was playing the war games. I was just pushing counters around. But then as I started getting into more advanced games or games that really try to focus on the command structure, you get that a lot in... You get that in some in Civil War games, but definitely in Napoleonic games. Um, and, uh, you know, at the time, some of the earlier ancient games didn't really go into that. But then you get the great battles of history that that's a very, very key component of the game or, or one of the, the one of the, the what, to me, like the core concept in the game is command structure and who and command radius and capability and all that stuff. So modeling command becomes a, a, a big uh uh, element of, of a war can be a big element of the war game, depending on what scale you're at and and the conflict you're trying to model. Uh, and I actually did a piece about Order Up, uh, and I might put a link to that down below, where I just talk about command, you know, how some games model command uh, through uh, through different facets, whether it be cards or, uh, you know, or command radiuses, or, you know, having it on the counter, stuff like that. So I'll, I'll put a link to that if you want to take a look at that in there as well. So I'm kind of going on and on and just talking and you're just looking at blank pages here. So anyway, then he goes into um, examples, talks about ancient warfare, and he has, has and, uh, spoiler alert, I'll probably cover his other book. He has a book called Lost Battles where he just, and that came along with a game and I just picked up the book. I didn't get the game. Uh, the game it's really expensive to pick up the, the game, the Lost Battles, but he came up with the system. He developed a system for ancient conflict and the Lost Battles books kind of talks about how he developed that system and talks about um, about that system, uh, and then um, and they had a game that went along with it. But uh, uh, so his Ancient Warfare, I imagine probably th 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 this probably there's a, there's a lot of similarity between those uh, those two um, those two books or th th this er this section uh, and uh, and that book, uh, his Lost Battles, which I'll cover at uh, a later Coffee with Kilroy, if you ask nicely. So here he's going into like the rules and stuff of ancient conflict in there. So here's an example of that. He's got World War II, an example of that. And here's the game Big Week that he talks about here. And then he talks about tactical combat as well. And 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 tactical combat is a totally different, um, not totally, but it's, it's a very different 
has very different focus on combat and, and what you take into account. And uh, and to me, uh, to tactical com modeling tactical combat is is tougher in a lot of respects because I mean you think that well strategic or operational level you've got a lot of stuff going on. You got supply, you got so many more units. You've got to move these units around and get them to the right spot. You the terrain you know, is, is a huge factor and, and distance, right? However, tactical, I mean, you're, you're dealing with um, individual level a lot of times. You're dealing with morale and, and, and kind of an X factor of how these individuals or these groups of individuals are going to react to a specific circumstance. Command takes a different, uh, uh, ha is just as important and takes a different focus in there, you know, because you're commanding smaller numbers, but those commands and those orders you know, uh, if they're not followed out, then, I mean, your squad isn't going to be able to accomplish what it needs to accomplish or get where it needs to go or be there when it needs to be there. Uh, and, you know, the whole, you know, kind of uh, fog of war is, is um, uh, and, and hidden uh, movement and, and the like is it, modeling that it takes on a whole new uh, priority or, or a whole new importance, I should say, uh, when you're dealing with tactical. So, um so this, here's a discussion on tactical. And let's just kind of flip through. As I said, you've got a lot of examples in there. Plus, you've got some games in here, too. So as, and this so this book has some full games. that You can pull these out. I haven't. I printed these out. I think I went to the site and printed some of these out uh, over time. And because uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't like defacing stuff, so I'm not going to pull these out of the book. But you have it in there if you wanted to make a copy of that. So there you have it. That's kind of my my take on this book. Uh, he's talking about combat <laughs> combat results tables. That's a that's a whole topic in and of itself, and he has that in the appendix. So anyway, so that is my you know not so short take on simulating war. But I, I find this is a if if you're if you're just a player of war games, I still think that there's some interesting reads in here and some some discussion on design and the elements of design and how it, how you get from point A to point B on some uh, on why you're on how you model certain aspects of the conflict or simulate certain aspects of the conflict um, so I, I like it I find it interesting um, and uh, anyway so that's why I wanted to talk about with you today on my coffee with Kilroy I thank you so much for stopping by love to know your thoughts on this what do you think about uh, this book and uh uh, and, uh, feel free to drop them down below. Um, and, and you don't have to agree or disagree with anything I said or agree or disagree with anything that, uh, that the author says or the instructor or the professor says, but, uh, just love to know your thoughts on it. Anyway, thanks all. Thanks for stopping by. Take care. Thanks for watching.